I want to talk to you a little bit about your role as the owner of this team, but also in the context of social justice, because this has become a town square, <clears throat> if you will, for social justice. And a lot of business leaders, I think, are grappling with this issue of their role in it. How have you thought about that? So one thing that I realize when you own a sports team is it's larger than a sports team. It's a social institution. You're doing it for the fans. You're doing it for uh, the broader population. I'm really glad we're situated in Brooklyn because we have the best fans in the world. And uh, uh, having this building, you know, Barclays Center here, uh, kind of fortuitously, we have this square or plaza in front of right. us with a, some empty space. So then this became a uh, location for people to gather and focus on whatever social cause that they want to focus on. Uh, this building has been the site of, uh, for us to hand out food uh, uh, with uh, food in cooperation with food banks. Right. Um, it's been the site of uh, vaccinations. It's been the site of voting. Uh, and obviously with uh, the last year after the George Floyd incident, uh, people protested for uh, social justice against racism. And I think that's very, very important. And seeing all this happen organically in front of Barclays Center, that was great. I, I felt very, very good about it. Did you ever think, I mean, you've, you just bought this team now a couple of years ago. Did you ever think you would be involved in all of this? No, I, I didn't. I guess four years ago, I didn't, I, I had no idea. Uh, but the NBA is very interesting. It's a very, um, uh, I, I think it's, a quite interesting sort of economic proposition in addition to all this uh, glitzy fanfare, right? When you, when you look at the players, they're huge mega superstars. Uh, but the business side of things uh, is just also quite attractive uh, in that team values are rising every year. And, uh, but before I came into this, I had no idea that this was going to work uh, right. the way it did. I want to talk more about the economics of basketball uh, in just a minute. But I want to ask you about this because you got involved in something called the Asian American Foundation, founding it effectively. It's really the first um, foundation focused on Asian Americans in the country in this, right. in, in this right. way. And it comes, by the way, on the heels. We're talking about uh, Black Lives Matter. How did you get involved in that? And what, what, what is it that you're trying to do? So this happened uh, more than a year ago, actually. Uh, you know, I started to notice um, sort of rising anti-Asian sentiment uh, because of COVID. Uh, everybody thinks that COVID came from China, and therefore, you know, as a, a Chinese person, you know, I, I kind of felt it personally. And, uh, uh, and then you start to see a lot of uh, crimes happening. So there was a period of time when every day you wake up, you see a new report of uh, anti-Asian hate crime. Uh, so a group of us uh, Asian Americans got together. Uh, we formed the Asian American Foundation. And uh, what are the problems that we're trying to solve, right? If you, if you look at the Asian American community in America, uh, everybody's okay with Asian Americans as long as things are going well. If the economy is well, the Asian Americans play by the rules, uh, prosper together with everybody else, that's fine. But if there's a crisis, if there's a pandemic, there's a war or there's an economic downturn, uh, Asian Americans get scapegoated. Right. And just look at history, right? Uh, back in the 1800s, uh, they banned Chinese immigrants coming into America. And uh, during World War II, uh, when America was at war with Japan, they actually interned, they, they put 120,000 American citizens that are of Japanese descent into concentration camps. And then you have, uh, in the 80s, Vincent Chin. Uh, what happened was he, uh, uh, you know, there was a uh, economic downturn because Japanese cars were overtaking American cars. So there was a huge animosity against the Japanese in Detroit. Vincent Chin, who's Chinese, by the way, went to a bar, got beaten up. They killed him. They beat him to death uh, by two auto workers in Detroit. Uh, and these two guys uh, got off pretty much without any jail time. So there's, there's a lot of that sort of uh, undertone of anti-Asian sentiment. When things are good, that's fine. When things are bad for everyone, that's when those ugly uh, right. shoots come out. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.